highlights for you at the half. Enjoy. Welcome to the All-State Game of the Week on ESPNU. Gorgeous Miami, Florida, the site for our All-State Game of the Week. A state rivalry as Bethune-Cookman makes the trip up to take on a BCS school in Miami here at Sun Life Stadium. And the Hurricanes are ready to take the field. And we welcome you to the ACC on ESPN. The Hurricanes come in at one and two. They could be two and one, trying to bounce back after a very emotional loss one week ago against Kansas State. Let's take it back. Inside of a minute to go, Ja'Cory Harris inside of the five-yard line. Lunging for the end zone. Original ruling, a touchdown. Miami in front and a minute away from being two and one. But an official's review, Trey Walker in pursuit for Kansas State. Ja'Cory Harris's right knee down. And Miami less than a yard shy of being above 500 in Al Golden's first season as Miami head coach. Alongside former Colorado and Boise State head coach Dan Hawkins, Adam Amin on hand. So much that Miami has gone through these last couple of months. Think about all the instability, the scandal that's rocked the program so far, all the injuries that Al Golden has had to deal with in year number one. How does he get past all this? It's hard to figure out who to put in in practice. You start running plays, you start taking reps, which guys go in, which guy, you, a lot of the in, questions about it. So. This is the first week, and he mentioned that he's got his most complete roster yet to be able to say, okay, you're practicing the whole week. You're in on this package. Let's get some things together and gel. Somebody he knows is going to be in the backfield, at least, is his outstanding running back, Lamar Miller, was hurt against Kansas State despite 100-plus yards inside of eight minutes, ended up banging up his shoulder, could not really do much on that final play. They're going to need him again. Lamar Miller is a big, strong, physical specimen. They want him to be the guy that can carry it 28 to 30 times a game, and they missed him on that goal line play last week. Brian Jenkins is the head coach in his second season at Bethune-Cookman, the MEAC coach of the year one season ago, the first time they're taking on a BCS conference opponent. They'll take the trip up from Daytona Beach to square off with the Hurricanes. Brian Jenkins, a Fort Lauderdale native, grew up rooting for the Hurricanes. And now he has an opportunity to make a little bit of noise. Bethune-Cookman won the toss. They elect to receive... Angelo Cabrera and Courtney Keith back to return. This Jake Wyclaw kick, and away we go from Miami. From the one yard line, it's Cabrera. A little bit of running room, runs into some Miami Hurricane defenders. Miami very good on punt returns and kick returns defensively. Ball goes out after a 26 yard return, and Bethune Cookman takes over. And Jamar Robinson. Usually the starting quarterback, but we look in today and it's Jackie Wilson. It's been a very interesting rotation for Bethune Cookman the first couple of weeks of this season. Wilson came in in last week's game against Hampton and led Bethune Cookman from behind for an exciting finish. First and 10 and a handoff to Rodney Scott, team leader in rushing. He'll get a couple of yards on the first play from scrimmage. Jackie Wilson, a sophomore from Fort Lauderdale. Very good rusher as well. You see what he's done passing so far in the season. Not a lot of reps passing the football, but a very tough kid, Brian Jenkins says. And this is the first time that Wilson is starting in 2011 after Robinson had the starts in the first three games. Second and seven from just past the 30. Wilson keeps it, and he'll throw it away. Flag is thrown on the play. Eddie Poole was the receiver in the area. Flag is thrown. Offside, number 99, defense. Five yard penalty. Marcus Forston is called for the flag. He'll give him five yards, and he'll remain second down. Had a little fly sweep action coming in there. I think the defensive line was anticipating that snap to come a little early. A much more manageable second down here for Wilson. A couple of backs in the backfield, including Jonathan Moment. 
Wilson will pick up the first down with his feet. Brought down shy of midfield. Vaughn Telemac finally wrapped him up, and let's take a look at our impact players for tonight's game. Rodney Scott is going to have to have a productive day. They cannot throw it every down. He's been the big workhorse for them. Needs to have productive downs for them. Transfer from Ole Miss, a handful of transfers for this Bethune-Cookman team. Blitz being shown by Miami. Flag is thrown, a neutral zone infraction, so a free play. Catch is made by K.J. Stroud. Jimmy Gaines is going to get flagged for that as he was showing the blitz. And Tom McCreesh, part of this ACC crew, will tell us all about it. Miami put in their nickel package in there. Miami's defense has been a staple for them this season. Sean Spence has been in the middle of it. Sean Spence is not only their leading tackler, he's also the guy that gets them lined up and makes the calls and is the leader in there. Great game last week. A career-high 14 tackles against Kansas State. And getting sent for a first and five for Bethune-Cookman inside of Miami territory. Bethune-Cookman has put up good offensive numbers, Coach, at times this season. They put up 63 in week one against an inferior Prairie View A&M team. But Miami and Al Golden said, we're going to respect what Bethune-Cookman can do because they can do a lot of good things on both sides of the football. And very important for them to be productive on this first drive in the game. Give them a little confidence. First and five for Wilson. Pressure coming from the backside. Anthony Ciccolo. The freshman from Tampa, the third generation hurricane, making his first start. And he picks up the tackle, a loss of three. See coming off the left-hand side of your screen. Line slanting there to the left. Got to get the ball out. Cannot hold it, particularly against this defense. Time it up. If it's not there, throw it away. Come to fight another day there. His grandfather and his father. Phenomenal hurricanes in their days. Grandfather in the late 50s. And in the 70s and 80s, his father. Quick screen thrown, Eddie Poole, the top target for Jackie Wilson or Jamar Robinson. He pushes the pile forward for a first down. Important for them to use the screens, the draws, the option game. That's the stuff that's going to keep Miami defense off balance. We see a transfer from Rutgers. Brian Jenkins was the wide receiver coach for a year under Greg Schiano at Rutgers. He's brought in a couple of Scarlet Knights and a handful of Division I FBS transfers. Bethune-Cookman moving the ball well on this first drive from the 40-yard line. A timeout whistled before the play. Timeout. Bethune-Cookman. It's the first timeout. It's a 30-second timeout. O'Brien well, Jenkins whistles for a timeout a fort lauderdale native excited to play the hurricanes but al golden has gone through so much this first season as the hurricane head coach so much instability that we talked about coach it's been a handful of things that al golden has had to push his team through well you go through the trauma of having all that stuff hit your program and what is going to happen so you're worrying a bunch and then you get to the Miami or the maryland game and you have guys get suspended that week so that disrupts everything you've done in training camp you get off to a rocky start, so your confidence is shaken. They obviously had a great game plan and a great game against Ohio State, and just not quite consistent this past week. You see the timeline for what Miami has gone through, and the boost uh, booster Nevin Shapiro causing a lot of issues for this Miami program. And Al Golden. Said this is the first time that he feels like he has almost his complete team with him. Still missing a couple of players. Rodney Scott banging his way close to a first down. A seven-yard pickup on first down. Second and manageable coming up. These are the suspended players for Miami this season. Still missing their fine safety, Ray Ray Armstrong, along with their defensive end, Duran Dye. They'll be back next week against Virginia Tech. Olivier Vernon still out, though. Travis Benjamin, the fastest guy on this team. You need him in every game you play. A well, second and short, but four wide shown here for Bethune-Cookman. 
This is a very athletic Bethune Cookman team on both offense and defense. They try to push the tempo as often as possible. Jackie Wilson, Rodney Scott trying to block Sean Spence, and pressure comes from Miami. It's Mike and Regis coming in to make the stop. Second sack of the day for the Hurricanes. Three down line for Miami, bringing inside pressure. They start off in a four down line look and then dropped out on the left hand side. That kind of confused the protection of Bethune Cookman. So it goes from second and short to third and a little longer. Seven to go. You didn't get to the 30 yard line. Bethune's moved it well so far in this game. First pass deep for Wilson, and the only man in the area was Maurice Francois. A fourth down coming up, and Wilson taking a big hit and a shot at the end of that play. Fourth down for Bethune. Got some pr productivity out of that drive. We'll see if they're able to get some points right here, but at least it wasn't a three and out. You were able to kind of sustain a little bit of inertia, a little energy in here. Looks like they're going to go ahead and punt it, play for some field position. Bethune Cookman does not have a good kicking game at all. But Corey Kowalski comes out. Travis Benjamin is back deep. Flags are thrown. And the ball went out inside of the red zone. 25 yard punt. The directional kick there from Kowalski. And let's see what the flag was about. It was thrown behind Benjamin. A couple of flags went up. Looks a little bit in that, that territory where you have guys running down the field and holding. Brian Jenkins of the two if you look at Brian Jenkins he's a very quiet so to speak individual but when he gets on the field he becomes very intense we saw that a couple of weeks ago when they went up against South Carolina State he was very demonstrative on the sidelines from start to finish illegal substitution trouble on the field by the defense five yards from the previous spot where we play fourth down Al Golden said his team hasn't been killed by penalties so far this year, but last week, despite only having four penalties in the whole game, two of them came on big moments of the game last year. Two of them were drive killers. The thing where penalties really kill you are on defense when you have those. Right. Some of those nickel and dime penalties on offense don't prove to be fatal, but the ones on defense where they sustain drives, those are very, very tough. Now we're going to go for it, so that penalty has proven big for Bethune Cookman. That's the third penalty already against Miami, and now Bethune will try to convert here. Again, needing to get to the 30. Not going to get there. Sean Spence comes up to meet Rodney Scott, and a turnover for Bethune Cookman. Big play from Sean Spence and Bethune in a game like this. Do you feel like they have to go for those types of plays on fourth down when they need to make an impact and maybe make a statement early? Well, the ball's at the 30. You're only going to gain 10 yards if you punt it thereabouts. Uh, Look like they're trying to run a zone read play there. Probably would have rather pulled it and let the quarterback get outside some space. Well, let's see the spot here. It didn't look like from initial look that Bethune Cookman was going to get it but it might be a very nice spot for the Wildcats this would be a huge play in the early part of this ball game for the Wildcats how about that a first down for Bethune Cookman you see just shy of the 30 is where the first down marker is where our marker is that looks like a very good spot for Bethune Cookman. So they'll set up at the 30 yard line. Al Golden seeing what we're seeing, I think, right here. The head coach for Miami is challenging the location for four progress. Let me go to first down. Well, this isn't. Pretty big call in the early part of this game for Bethune Cookman. You said it, and we, we talked a little bit about it. They're trying to make a statement here. This is the first time they're taking on a BCS school. And Brian Jenkins, a pretty gutsy head coach, going for it on fourth down and short. 
But Al Golden is hoping that Sean Spence indeed didn't make the stop. And what we saw, it looked like it was a little bit short. I would say so, unless there was some unbelievable leg drive underneath that pile. I think Al Golden's got a legitimate claim. I think it's a pretty safe call for Bethune Cookman right here. Ball's on the 30 yard line. You're not going to gain that much field position. If you don't want to kick the field goal, you really certainly can't punt. So you're you're sort of in no man's land. You might as well go ahead and swing your sword. And Bethune Cookman, the last two seasons, their field goal kicking has converted just three field goals in 12 attempts. So Bethune Cookman, not a team that's unless it's a chip shot really going to go for a field goal. And one of the things that's emphasized on these reviews as well is indisputable video evidence. And indeed if that spot which was pretty generous on the initial call should be a little bit shorter and again from our look it does look like it should be a little bit shorter. Miami will take over despite a couple of penalties on that drive that allowed Bethune Cookman to keep moving the ball. After review, the play stands as called on the field. Miami is charged with the first timeout. Did not have enough evidence to overturn it. Right. So Al Golden loses a timeout. And Bethune Cookman keeps the ball. Short trip from Daytona. To come up to Miami here at Sun Life Stadium. There's some rowdy fans too at Bethune Cookman. They brought the band. It's about 30 tubas in the band, coach. They want there to be band to be playing after this drive. First and ten from the 30-yard line. Jackie Wilson, his first start of the season at the quarterback spot. Play number nine on this drive for Wilson of the Wildcats. Spence showing a little bit of pressure and backing off. Wilson to throw on first down. Looking for the end zone and, and then nobody really there. A couple of deep throws we've seen. That one. Jackie, for Robinson, Harris. Jackie Robinson's been taking a few hits. 54. McInerney Regis comes off the edge over there. You cannot, you cannot get the, take that many hits this early in the in the game. You saw it earlier when Wilson got rid of a pass that was deep down the middle. Yeah, that wouldn't be Jackie Robinson. He'd be hitting the he'd do then hitting Jackie Wilson. <laughs> well, Wilson played on a broken ankle in the playoffs last season in the FCS playoffs a year ago. So Brian Jenkins has faith in the toughness of Wilson, but he's taking a couple of shots early. He'll dump it off underneath. He's got Jordan Murphy as tight end. Needed to get to the 20 yard line for a first down, a pickup of 13. And Bethune Cookman continues to move the football well. Mike Williams finally brings down Murphy. They've got away with a couple things here early not executing great the back goes the opposite way and they still running a little bootleg there so he had to throw but Bethune Cookman has not been all that efficient on this first drive although they're making some yards. Bethune Cookman inside of the red zone 12 for 15 this season with a dozen touchdowns very good red zone efficiency. Miami has not been good defensively in the red zone. Jonathan moment gets the screen pass. Jonathan moment close to the first down marker and he'll pick it up. 11 yard gain and Bethune Cookman inside of the 10. Little swing pass out to the right hand. Anytime you get the ball to guys in space, you're going to have better odds on offense. Good job by the receivers blocking on the outside. Nice block by Jonathan moment. The senior from Orlando. Three touchdowns a year ago helped set up some very good field position right now for Bethune Cookman looking to punch in a score and making impact in a statement early Rodney Scott pushing for the goal line. The ball may have came loose at the end of the play and Miami has it. Tough break for the Wildcats. Drive the length of the field.
This is what happens when you try to go for extra yards sometimes. He's pushing and driving in there. Miami does a good job. Second, third guys there ripping it out. Clearly a fumble. Sean Spence getting that ball out. And how about Vaughn Telemac meeting Scott right at the goal line, pushing him back. Spence came over, knocked it free. It's the battle of the weight room coaches. How and many Telemac, squats can you do? Right. And Telemac showing the muscle. Spence jarring it loose. And Miami very deep inside of its own territory does take over. And Ja'Cory Harris and the Hurricanes getting ready. Five on the line for an athletic Bethune-Cookman defense. Lamar Miller, who was injured last week, gets the call on first down. Ryan Davis the stop and Ja'Cory Harris, four-year starter from Miami, Florida, takes over. He's had a solid season in terms of completions. You see the turnovers, though. That has been big for him. Six straight games of the pick, 42 career interceptions for Ja'Cory Harris. And this is a very athletic Bethune-Cookman team, which coach led the nation in turnover margin a year ago. Good opportunity for Miami right here to go play action and throw it deep. We'll see what their mindset is if they want to just play conservative. Looks like they're checking to a run play here. And it is Miller who cuts the other way for some space. Close to the first down marker before DJ Howard wraps him up to bring him down after a gain of eight. Little zone play here. Nice job cutting it back. You'd like to see him at the end of the run, and this may be the result of having an injured shoulder. You'd like to see him get north and south and square up, get into that defender and push for that first down. A third and one coming up. Eduardo Clemens comes in as you see Miller head to the sideline. And Eduardo Clemens, the sophomore from Miami, Florida. Al Golden said that Clemens is going to work himself into the rotation, especially with Miller being injured last week but making the start today. And don't forget, as coach told you, Mike James, the fine backup, is also dinged up a little bit. Third and short. Harris, a quick toss, and the pass deflected. That'll bring up fourth down. Big Bethune defensive play by Ryan Lewis. Let's go to the studios in Darinoka. All right, guys, how about our win? Thanks very much, Dari. Patrick Harris back to return a Dalton box punt. So Bethune and Miami with big defensive stands in this first quarter. This will be down to the 47 yard line. A punt of 42 yards from Dalton Botts. Halfway home of the first, no score. Miami and Bethune Cookman from Sun Life Stadium. ESPN News College Football All State Game of the Week is brought to you by All State. Shop less, get more. Make one call to an All State agent. It's tailgate week. Check out what we've got outside of Sun Life Stadium. Check out what we've got inside of it. A scoreless first quarter halfway home. They're throwing up the U for the Hurricanes, but Bethune brought the house too, and Bethune cooked in an interesting turn at the start of this ball game. Instead of Jamar Robinson, the Maryland transfer, who started the first three games of the season, you get the sophomore from Fort Lauderdale, Jackie Wilson. And Brian Jenkins, the head coach of Bethune-Cookman, has talked about this before. And each of the first four weeks of the season, he said, whoever has the best week of practice is going to be the starting quarterback. I've got a wide open race. And Jackie Wilson had a great game doing this last week. He ran the football well against Hampton. He'll pick up four yards. Coach, what is that like when you've got a couple of quarterbacks that both have a lot of talent, a lot of athleticism? How does that work in practice when you're trying to work these guys out? It's tough. You'd love to have one solid guy that you go with, but sometimes you're just thrust into that situation. It can be difficult. You'd love to have, like I said, that one guy, but if it doesn't pan out, you need to compete and see who can get it done. The second and six for Wilson and an empty backfield. Four rush for Miami. Deep throw from Wilson. Eddie Poole is the intended target. Brandon McGee, the junior from Plantation, Florida, on the coverage. We've seen Wilson try to go deep a couple of times. It brings up third and six. 
you have to be able to back them off. They've done a nice job in the screen game. Look for some of that. Look for quarterback draw. Miami has not had a linebacker inside the tackle box for Bethune Cookman, and that allows the quarterback to run the ball a little bit. There's Jamar Robinson, the transfer from Maryland, who started every game until today for Bethune Cookman. Bethune trying to convert on third down. They moved the ball well on their first drive, but they fumbled at the goal line. Five defensive backs for Miami. Flag is thrown on the play. Maurice Francois makes the catch short of the first down marker. We'll see what this flag is about. It was thrown as Wilson took the snap. We did see motion before the play. Defense, number 31. Five yards from previous spot. Go down. Fourth Miami penalty of the day. Let's go back to the studios in Darinoka. All right, guys. Go. Thanks, Dari. Third offside penalty for Miami, setting up third and one. You got to look at the nation's number one offense, Georgia Tech, 4 0 for the first time in over 20 years. Miami looking for a stand. Wilson trying to convert on third down. He will. Maurice Francois the catch. Bethune will move the football after a gain of four yards to Francois. Lee Chambers was there to finally push him out of bounds. Coach Golden wants his defense to be aggressive, and that's what every coach wants. But they've just been sloppy on this first drive. Right. And they just need to be a little bit more disciplined and watch the football and do the things you're supposed to do. Your coach teaches you. A half dozen first downs for Bethune on their first couple of drives. Backwards pass thrown, but caught by Harris. And good coverage from the Miami defense, but a flag is thrown on the play. And again, we've talked about this already today, the amount of flags in the early part of this ball game. Bethune, a very heavily penalized team. And Miami so far today has been pretty careless. I think this one's going to go against Bethune Cookman. Tom McCreesh lets you know. Illegal block, by the way, number seven on the offense. Ten yards from the end of the run. The repeat, third, first down. Bethune averaging 100 yards of penalties per game so far. And you see Brian Jenkins, how he's react to it. That's been his biggest pet peeve, especially with, at times, how well Bethune has played in their conference, the MEAC and FCS conference. But discipline has been a huge issue for Bethune-Cookman so far this year. This is going to push it deep back. Tough start for the officials, maybe, too, huh? Should be first and 25. And it is. Just shy of midfield. Anthony Jordan. And Jordan will get all of that yardage back and a little bit more. A first down run of 27 yards for Anthony Jordan, who hasn't had a ton of carries this season, but he's made the most of them. You see up front here, Coach Golden talked about guys freelancing. They're 88th in the country against the rush, which you don't expect from a Miami Hurricanes team. Guys need to get in their gaps and secure their area. Wilson throws on first down, and the catch is made by his tight end, Jordan Murphy, inside the five-yard line. So a pickup of 27 on the run, a pickup of 21 on the catch, and Bethune trying to work back to the line quickly. First and goal opportunity as the sophomore from Massachusetts, Murphy, makes the grab. Like the changeup. Tempo change is always tough on the defense. This is an athletic Bethune-Cookman team on both sides of the football, proving it in the first two drives of this game. They fumbled here last time. Wilson stacked up near the goal line. Did he get in? No signal just yet. And Jackie Wilson trying to take it home just shy, but still a couple of more opportunities to punch this one in. Anytime you have a running quarterback, that adds an extra dimension and certainly a great <laughs> coming back quarterback sneak, another big pile. Boy, Wilson again trying to 
jam his way through that front line of Miami. And he was short again, so third and goal coming up. This is where Bethune Cookman failed last time. Rodney Scott lost the football at the goal line. Now Brian Jenkins hoping that Jackie Wilson and the rest of the Wildcats can score here. Haven't been denied off in this season. You're thinking two downs right here if you're Bethune Cookman anyway. Eddie Poole near side of the screen just off the line. Wilson to the corner. Eddie Poole. Bethune jumps out in front in the quarter. You mentioned Bethune Cookman. They have a tremendous amount of transfers of guys that have been in FBS programs and played in FBS stadiums. And so those guys are not going to be intimidated coming in here playing against the Hurricanes. Sven Hurd is on for the point after. The hold of Kowalski and a 7 0 Bethune Cookman lead. The Wildcats move the ball very efficiently on the first couple of drives. They fumble at the goal line on drive number one, but Eddie Poole on drive number two, his fourth touchdown reception of the season. Jackie Wilson getting the start for the first time this season. Finds Poole in the corner. 7-0 Cats in front. Bethune Cookman making a statement in this first quarter. A couple of defensive stands and they punch in a touchdown. Eddie Poole, the top target on the Rutgers transfer. Paying off the drive, but this was the key play on first and 25. Anthony Jordan with a 27-yard run. Punishing. Bethune Cookman has been physical running the football. And then Eddie Poole making the grab. The run from Jordan. The longest one of his season and Eddie Poole grabs his fourth touchdown of the year. He had two of them last week in a victory over Hampton and Brian Jenkins, who was a Miami Hurricane fan growing up in Fort Lauderdale, showing no intimidation. It doesn't look like his Wildcats are either. Bethune Cookman 21 offensive snaps and Miami three hard to score points when you're not on the field. Devon Johnson and Travis Benjamin. Benjamin is the guy that Bethune probably wants to avoid. They kick it in that direction though. And the kicking game has not been good for Bethune Cookman the last two seasons. Sven Hurd sends it out. Miami will take over the football as you get a view from overhead here at Sun Life Stadium, a 7 0 Bethune lead. Miami has the football after those penalties. Ja'Cory Harris. Tom McCreese was just telling you where the football is going to be for Miami and good field position coming up for Ja'Cory Harris. They wanted to have the two penalties on Bethune Cookman offset each other and Al Golden was not really seeing that. <laughs> Brian Jenkins wanted the explanation after there was a little bit of confusion so Miami has the football at the 40 yard line. As coach told you just three snaps so far for Ja'Cory Harris. Pressure coming from Reggie Sandilands. The catch is made, though, for Miami by Travis Benjamin, the fastest guy in the Hurricanes, down the sideline for a pickup of 22. Good to have some easy throws. Bootleg, nice throw. Get it to your playmaker. Just a little rim shot on the other side. Simple throw, catch and run. Fastest guy on your team, just get him the ball. Doesn't matter how, just get him the ball. Let your playmakers go to work. Well, started from their own 40 and now inside of the Bethune 40.
Travis Benjamin, one of the top wide receivers in the ACC, gets the screen pass here. And a good ankle tackle made by Daniel Rhodes, the senior from Jacksonville, Florida. Preventing a longer run from Benjamin. Short pickup, four yards, second and six. See right here, they're trying to run, run the ball over here, but nobody's covering the receiver. So Jacory just picks the ball up and throws it outside. Travis Benjamin, a couple of catches, over 100 in his Miami career now, came in with 99. Deep drop from Harris, but plenty of time to throw. Harris takes off past the 30-yard line, and Jarkevis Fields wrapped him up close to the first down marker. It'll be short for Al Golden and the Hurricanes on this third down. Last time they were in this position, they threw the ball, and that was when it got batted down in the first position, possession, so I'm sure they were wishing they would have hammered it up in there. I think you'll probably see a little power football right here. Bethune has had the better of the offense in the early part. Ja'Cory Harris trying to convert on third down. Incomplete thrown and fourth down coming up for Miami and a failed conversion for the second time on third down for the Hurricanes. You've got the same instance going on. They're trying to run the football over here, and he has the option to throw it, and it gets tipped. But Ja'Cory needs to know down and distance here. Just hand it, get the first down. That's one of our impact players, Ryan Davis, who clipped it at the line. They're going to go for it on fourth down. And they're going to be stopped short. Mike James got the call. And the Bethune-Cookman defense has come up with another stand. And the Wildcats force a Miami turnover. Ryan Lewis with penetration. That's been their trademark, and they need to do that against this bigger offensive line. Brian Jenkins and the Wildcats fired up defensively. The guy they call Smash, Mike James, gets smashed at the line by Davis. Wildcats take over. The Palmer and Pump Texas AM full highlights at the half. Al Golden's team stacked up on fourth down. A couple of failed third down conversions and a fourth and a one run. Stopped by the Wildcats who take over. Already up 7 0 here in this first quarter. And Anthony Jordan, who ripped off that big run to set up the Bethune touchdown, gets the call on first down. Let's take a look at that last fourth and one play for Miami. Mike James right here comes off these down blocks to try to get a pour, and we don't get the block made. Just comes off. Not good vision by the O-line of the Hurricanes. Got to be able to pick up that blitzer. And it was Ryan Lewis, the all MEAC selection, charging in to make the stop. Jordan with a pickup of three on first down, second and seven. Wilson to the sideline and incomplete. Eddie Poole couldn't hang on. Poole on the receiving end of the opening touchdown of this ball game, third and seven coming up for Bethune. Good plan by the Wildcats to move the pocket. Avoid the rush, avoid the negative plays. Jackie Wilson, the sophomore, his first start of 2011. It's been a battle between he and Jamar Robinson in practice each of the first four weeks of the season. He gets the start today. He's got Bethune out in front. He's got Anthony Jordan to his right. Needs seven. Eddie Poole will get it and more. A first down catch for Poole. Mike Williams on the coverage, a nine-yard gain. Very impressive by the Wildcats. Doing a great job mixing it up. Short throws, moving the pocket, running the ball inside. A lot of variety for the defense to see. Jackie Wilson already over 60 yards passing on the day, and Eddie Poole has three catches. Winning a first down catch there. Wilson will run it. Not much room to run. 
couple of yards on that first down play. ESPN News coverage of college football continues tonight. Sean Renfrey and Duke. Not too far away from here to take on T.Y. Hilton, one of the most electrifying players in the country at FIU. College football primetime presented by Five Hour Energy, part of Tailgate Week, fired up by Kingsford Charcoal tonight at 7 o'clock. Second and eight. Pressure from Miami. Wilson can't evade it. Marcus Fortson is there to make the stop. And a flag thrown on the play. Busy day for Tom McCreesh and this ACC crew. Holding number 69 offense. 10 yards in the previous spot. It remains second down. It's Terrence Hackney, the transfer from Ole Miss, calling for the holding penalty. Miami's been playing base defense with their four down linemen, have not penetrated and not blitzed much, dropping seven into coverage. They haven't needed it, but you wonder if they're going to kind of go to that a little bit to try to create some sort of big play, turnover, or pressure, a quick throw for an interception. Ramon Buchanan, slow to get up. The senior from Melbourne, Florida, who had a block field goal last week against Kansas State. Shaking up. Buchanan is able to get up. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear today from beautiful Miami, Florida. Everything Goodyear has learned making tires that go the distance inspires when they roll into yours. Goodyear, more driven. Gorgeous shot. South Florida, Buchanan, not a sight that Al Golden wants to see off the field. Well, Jordan Futch will come into the game. The senior from Hollywood, Florida is on. You see them tending to Buchanan's right knee. Al Golden said he wants to get this team in Miami back to the old days of the high power defense, the high octane guys that were on the field. Defense was a staple of Miami football for so long, especially in the 90s and working up to that national championship in the early 2000s. He wants to get back to the old days of the U. Well, I thought it was interesting. He brought in Michael Irvin and Ray Lewis and Jimmy Johnson, and they talked about how do you get there, and it's hard work. It's grinding it out every single day, and that's what leads to those type of performances. Three on the line for Miami and five defensive backs on a second and 18 after the penalty against Bethune. Anthony Jordan pinballs his way near the original line of scrimmage out to the 40 yard line and that takes us to the end of the first quarter. Among the Wildcats here in Miami today a 7 nothing start after the first quarter holding the Canes down Eddie Poole on the end of the touchdown catch from Jackie Wilson in his first start one quarter through in Miami. Wednesday night volleyball at 7 and 9 on ES. Yeah. Well, Bethune Cookman trying to make a statement against Miami. They fumbled the football at the goal line on their first drive, but they came right back. Eddie Poole from Jackie Wilson on a one yard touchdown reception to give the Wildcats a 7 0 lead. But this was the story Miami's inability to move the football against this defense. Cannot get the running game going. Need to be more physical up front. Miami needs to get it going. It's easy when you're on playing Ohio State and your games uh, at night and you've got an FC, FCS team coming in here wants to beat you. You need to get it going. The body language by Miami needs to be picked up. Get a little energy going. Start slapping some backs, running to the football, making some things happen. Get excited. 18 more plays for Bethune Cookman ran in that first quarter than Miami, but a third and 12 coming up for the Wildcats. They've converted three of their four third downs. Wilson recovers. Wilson won't get much. But Denzel Perriman coming over, banging him out of bounds, and a fourth down coming up for the Wildcats. We saw Ramon Buchanan shaken up a little bit earlier. He's having his right knee tended to. Buchanan, the senior from Melbourne, Florida, still on the sidelines. Shaken up on this drive near the end of the first quarter. Of 
Corey Kowalski back to punt. Travis Benjamin will return. Remember, Kowalski had a punt earlier, but a penalty brought it back, and a flag is thrown on this play. Ball start. Number 19 offense. Five yards from the previous spot. It remains fourth down. Brian Jenkins sees his Wildcats commit a penalty. It was Kowalski and an offside call against Miami that allowed Kowalski and Bethune to set up fourth and two. They ended up going for it and converting on that first drive of the game. A discipline at issue today for Miami. Discipline at issue all season for Bethune Cookman in terms of penalties. A little bit deeper now. Kowalski has to kick this one away. And he does not want Travis Benjamin to get his hands on this. Benjamin will wave it off. Another flag is thrown at the end of this play near the sidelines. Smart football by Bethune Cookman punting that thing away and getting it out of bounds. You don't need to have the fastest guy on their team return one back and get the crowd and get the team fired up. Another careless penalty against Miami, this one against Laron Bird, a senior. That's the discipline the coach was talking about. Five penalties against Miami. We have barely played a minute in the second quarter. This is a team in Miami that only had four penalties all last week. So here's Ja'Cory Harris. Not much going offensively for Miami. Unable to convert a fourth and one on their last touch of the football. Three wide on the strong side. A screen thrown out to Eduardo Clements. Make it Philip Dorsett, the freshman. Stopped by Gene Fanor. Monday, Jesse Palmer and David Pollock provided an engaging and interactive look at the past week's action and set the scene for the upcoming week's big games. The Palmer and Pollock Show on ESPNU Mondays at 1 and 9 Eastern. College football lives here every day on ESPNU. Harris hasn't been in much of a rhythm against this Bethune defense so far today. Second and three for Miami. Lamar Miller gets the handoff. Jarkivas fields the stop. We go to the studios in Dari Noka. All right, guys, Georgia Tech and NC State as we update this one. It is all yellow jasses. Three for touchdowns. Baylor, K-State. Baylor down six. Robert Griffin to Kendall Wright. Robert Griffin on the season. 15 touchdowns, 14 incompletions. He is a quirky fellow as well. RG3 in line for the Heisman in the early part of the season. Third and three for Miami. Still without a conversion on third down. They'll finally pick one up. Philip Dorsett. Two big plays. His first couple on this drive for Miami and a first down pickup. I like the simple throws. Get your quarterback some confidence. Let him hook up. They've got enough skill on this offensive side just to throw the ball short, break a tackle, and make a long run for a touchdown. You saw Gene Fanor make the stop, and Dorsett shaken up on the play. And they've had the wind knocked out of them. First and 10 for Miami. Lamar Miller across the 35-yard line. Four-yard pickup. Second and six coming up as Dorsett looks like he's in a lot of pain right now. I don't think Lamar Miller is running like they want him to run. I think that shoulder, it's very difficult. He did not hit all week, and his left shoulder's been sore. Very tough to run in there and be physical. I don't think he's putting his pads down and banging it in there and getting those extra yards like he could. Each of the first three games this year, 100-plus yards. Second and six, Lamar Miller across the first down marker. Reggie Sandilands finally got to him. This might depend on the spot as well. Looked like they did give him the first down, and they did. But Miller picks it up for Miami. Coming right to left, faking the fly sweep back to Benjamin, running that simple power play that's been stopped by Bethune-Cookman early, but because of the deception, they were able to get a few more yards with that play. Yeah. 
And two in the backfield now, both Miller and James. They call Miller Dash, they call James Smash. First and ten, needing to get to the 48 of Bethune. A flag whistles this play down. Ball start. Number 70 offense. Five yard penalty. It remains first down. John Feliciano making his third career start. The redshirt freshman called for the false start. Those are very tough to take, particularly when they come from a wide receiver that just needs to sit out there and watch the football. No need for those guys to jump the gun. And Sean Trell Henderson, who's been out due to some back surgery, he has practiced the last two weeks, but had back surgery in early August. He's been out, but he's on the depth chart this week. Lamar Miller makes the catch in the flat on first and 15 and has nowhere to go against this Wildcat defense. A loss of three. Great pursuit from Bethune Cookman. Tremendous energy from the Wildcats. Miami looking for something to spark them to get them going. They need some internal leadership here. A little fortitude, make a play, get the team excited. Was second and 18 coming up for Harris. Bunch to the left for Harris. Pressure coming. Brought down. Ryan Davis, the senior from Tampa with a sack. A loss of eight. And third and a mile for Miami. Ryan came into this game with three sacks. Running back can't block him. He adds to another one right there. Mike James missed the block. All MEAC selection leads this team and really the MEAC in a lot of defensive categories. Third and 26. They'll dump it off for Clements. Clements has some room. Went back to near the original line of scrimmage. But stop from Bethune Cookman as Gene Fanor got there. Good safe call by Miami. You don't want to put your quarterback at risk. Get some yards and regroup. Bethune with a 7 0 lead and Eddie Poole touchdown in the first quarter. Taking on a BCS team for the first time in its program history. And defensively, they've done numbers on Miami so far. Fair catch signaled by Patrick Harris as the Wildcats force another punt from the Hurricanes. 9 12 to go in the first half. The Wildcats take over when you come back to Miami. Back at Sun Life Stadium, Bethune Cookman leading Miami 7 0. Watching the ACC on ESPN. Let's take a look at our ACC update brought to you by Dr. Pepper. Really good things so far in the early part of the season for the ACC. Three unbeaten teams this week. A couple of them are square off tonight. Everybody wants to know, is Clemson the real deal? Is Virginia Tech going to be able to stop that Clemson offense and Sammy Watkins and Taj Boyd? Sammy Watkins is a real deal. I know that. Virginia Tech a weaker schedule than Clemson so far. Jackie Wilson and the Wildcats take over inside their own red zone. Rodney Scott makes the catch. Jordan Futch with the stop. It's a loss of one. and. Frank Beamer against Dabo Sweeney got the veteran coach in the ACC and the youngster in the Virginia ACC. Virginia Tech maybe hasn't played the kind of schedule so far that everybody looks at and respects. Right. But you have to respect Frank Beamer and the job he does. And that will be tough game on the road for Clemson. And try to make it two in a row against a ranked team on the road. Second and 11 for Bethune. Play fake to Rodney Scott. Wilson, flag thrown on the play. Gets rid of the football close to the first down marker to K.J. Stroud. And there was a flag thrown in the backfield. It's been a busy afternoon for Tom McCreesh. Three penalties already against Bethune for 30 yards. Five against Miami for 36. Going to block in the back. Number 68 offense. The penalties decline. It'll be third down. 
Alex Monroe right tackle. This is a play the, the quarterback has got to learn to have that timer and get the ball out. You, you double clutch and you run around back there. You're only going to add to the penalty situation. Plus you're going to get hit and or sacked. Avoid those negative plays. And oftentimes you get that with both Jamar Robinson, and the Maryland transfer who started the first three games and with Jackie Wilson making his first start. They're guys who can use their feet well to extend plays, but sometimes it gets them into trouble. Low snap on third and 11. Wilson trying to use his feet will go nowhere. Marcus Robinson, the senior, wraps up Wilson for a loss of three and forces a Bethune-Cookman punt. Miami's been giving them a few problems in their protection going from an even front of four down front to an odd front of three down look and that tends to tinker with the offensive line and how they want to protect. Miami. Trying to get something going offensively. Corey Kowalski. Back to punt to. Travis Benjamin. And again, they're going to keep this one away from Benjamin. The ball should have been down near the 45 yard line. It hit a Bethune Cookman Wildcat. We'll sort this out when we return. First half from Miami. 725 left. Easy juice, Goodyear bringing you our aerial coverage today in our All-State Game of the Week. The ACC on ESPN and the ACC's Hurricanes down 7-0 to an FCS team. Bethune-Cookman, the lone score of the game so far. Fourth Miami possession of the day. Ja'Cory Harris from the 44. All day to throw. Deep down the middle of the field, has it and open, and it's caught for a touchdown. Tommy Streeter. going to get a little excited. Everybody needed a shot of adrenaline right there. 56 yards and for Tommy Streeter who made his first career start against Kansas State last week and a former teammate in high school of Ja'Cory Harris on the receiving end from that 56 yard strike. Jake Wyclaw ties us at seven. Ja'Cory Harris, career touchdown number 55, and it comes to his high school teammate and Tommy Streeter. Coach said it, they needed a shot in the arm. They took a shot downfield, and Tommy Streeter takes it to the house. 7 all, 7.15 left. The Hurricanes had a sluggish start to their day offensively. But most importantly right now for Miami, a tie game as Ja'Cory Harris with a 56-yard touchdown strike to that man, Tommy Streeter. And after the first 16 plays, Miami had just about nothing going. The Miami Northwestern High School graduates and now Hurricane teammates team up to tie it up, tie it up at seven apiece. Courtney Keith from the six. Can't find room along the edge, shy of the 20-yard line. Good coverage from Miami. Not great coverage from Bethune on this play. What makes this play go is there's two tight ends in the game and two backs, solid run play action, and going to the post, and the free safety bites on the run action. Typically not a throwing formation with two tight ends and two backs. That's more where they want to pound it. So good design by Miami offensive coordinator Jeff Prusher. Ja'Cory Harris is a starter in high school is 30 and 0. He became a quarterback as a sophomore and in his first game he threw five touchdowns in high school to that guy. It turned into a pretty good tandem over the last couple of years. Jackie Wilson of the Wildcats take over Rodney Scott with nowhere to go. Sean Spence 
met him at the line of scrimmage and pushed him back with help from the rest of the Miami defense. Little confidence goes a long, long way. Little energy. You see the whole group of Orange bouncing around, moving around, looking like they're excited to play football. Scott and Moment are the backs. Wilson with pressure coming. It's tipped near the line of scrimmage by Thomas Finney. Third and nine for Bethune. Let's go to the studios. All right, guys, let's update Auburn and South Carolina in Columbia for a one-yard run. Auburn leading South Carolina on the road nines. We'll be watching, Dari. Third and nine for Bethune-Cookman, and the crowd finally getting loud in Miami. Wilson. Good pursuit from the Miami defense, and they'll force another Bethune-Cookman punt. Denzel Perriman on the stop. Little emotion goes a long, long way, doesn't it? Crowd gets fired up, kids get fired up, play with a little bit more intensity. It's be the third straight drive for Bethune Cookman ending in a punt. Travis Benjamin get his hands on it at the 40 evades that first tackle Travis Benjamin gets another block Travis Benjamin into the open field only the kicker to beat Kowalski brings him down <laughs> 44 yards for Travis Benjamin his longest return of the season Running back Eduardo Clemens with a great block. Punter needs to stay with the script. There's a reason you want this thing out of bounds. Great job by Eduardo right there. Clemens that big block. And it was Martin Embry the third who missed the initial tackle on Travis Benjamin. And look what happens. Inside the red zone, Miami. Harris for the end zone, looking for Allen Hearns. But a flag thrown at the end of the play. Dion Hanks was on the coverage. This might be a pass interference call. Allen Hearns has been a go to guy for Ja'Cory Harris this season. And those two big touchdowns against Ohio State couple of weeks back he was on the receiving end of that attempt yes, this is where Bethune Cookman's lack of discipline has hurt them this year it hurts them on this play from Deion Hanks see with the mentality of Miami Hurricanes here trying to get that running game going see if we can't get Lamar Miller teed up in here Miller touchdown wide receiver Tommy Streeter great block on the edge Bethune Cookman playing man so the corner runs down inside with him Miami playing the kind of inspired ball that Al Golden wants them to play. They need to learn from this and, and start this way instead of letting the game happen. They need to take it to the game. Miami with a couple of touchdowns in a minute and 41 seconds. Third of the season for Lamar Miller. The Miami native. Able to punch it home after Travis Benjamin puts it into the open field. A 44 yard return from Benjamin to set up this from the guy they call Dash 14 7 Miami. Guys, SPNU. Miami 
Miami has jumped out in front. Lamar Miller trying to become the first 1,000 yard rusher in a season since Willis McGahee finishes off a very quick drive. We've seen what Miami did to start the day and what they've done their last two touches with the football. Angelo Cabrera from the five yard line for Bethune Cookman wrapped up right at the 20. Nantambu Fentress with a big stop for a great coverage from Miami here. I'll take us to our Twitter question, twitter.com slash ESPNU, who is the best Miami football player of all time. You got a lot to choose from with the 81 All-Americans. Willis McGahee is in that category as well. And that is just tradition personified. Some of the names that you're looking at right now. You could argue about that all day. Yeah. There'll be a lot of nominations coming in there. Benny Blades, part of the great defensive effort for Miami. Miami trying to pick things up defensively. They've been able to force punts in the last three drives for Bethune Cookman after the Wildcats made a statement of the first quarter. Jackie Wilson rolling, nearly picked off. The ball was deflected into the hands of his receiver. And a catch made by Patrick Harris. And that slipped right through the hands of a Miami defender in Jordan Futch. Coming back with the bootleg. Surprising that they're going so many times to the left, which is tough on the quarterback making that throw. More times than not, you'd like to get that play to the right. They're calling that an incomplete pass. And Brian Jenkins is not happy with that call. This is what we talked about. He's very soft-spoken outside of the football field. You put him on that gridiron and all of a sudden he flips a switch. A very intense coach and his Wildcats try to take that demeanor as well. Anthony Jordan who broke off a long run in the first quarter to set up a touchdown picks up five before he's wrapped up by Shane Green. Let's take a look at that last play. So this was on first down. And right at the end of that play. Nice call by the officials there. They've had a busy day today. 11 combined penalties in this first half. Jordan splits out on third and five. Five defensive backs. Three-man rush for Miami. Wilson gets a first down catch from Francois. And he shakes his way out past the 40-yard line. Good pickup on that third down. 17 yards from Francois. Vaughn Telemac finally got to him. Caught Miami rushing three here, so not much of a, of a pressure on the quarterback. And be able to get the ball out there. Normally when you've got extra guys underneath, you're dropping eight, you'd be able to cover that play, but right. able to fit it in there. And so Brandon McGee was the one who missed that initial tackle. Wilson can pitch it. He will to Jordan. He gets banged hard by Jojo Nicholas, a converted quarterback who's been so great as a safety this season. It's a pickup of six, though, for Jordan and the Wildcats trying to move the football. And all day, Coach, Miami has made mistakes, whether it's missed tackles, whether it's penalties. Bethune Cookman has done a decent job of taking advantage of those when they've been given those opportunities. They're doing a nice job coming back after the big touchdown, trying to stunt some of that momentum. Bethune getting it done on the ground. Jackie Wilson will keep it on the ground and he'll get the first down. Jimmy Gaines the stop and that'll move the chains with three and a half left in this first half. Having the ability to run your quarterback you need to get an extra defender down in there to cover that. Again you see the body language Miami needs to pick it up got the hands on the hip need to get going. Bethune Cookman has tried to up tempo it at times today as well. Wilson, a uh, bad throw to Gene Dessen. Threw it too high, second and, uh, second and ten. Too casual, too casual. Coach knows it, had a guy open. Stay with your mechanics, get out there, roll out, put a good ball in that running back, and you've got some yards. It's a Bethune Cookman offense that in 15 games under Brian Jenkins has scored at least 14 points. They've only scored less than 20 twice and both against their MEAC rival South Carolina State including once in week two. 
this season. Second and ten. Good block in the backfield and Wilson able to pick up a couple of yards near the 40 yard line. Sean Spence brought him down after a gain of four. Wilson has taken a couple of shots today so far. Miami bringing in a blitzer off the corner there. The running back gets a little bit of a chip on it. Von Telemark was a guy coming off the edge. Running back gets a chip on it. And again, you have the running, the quarterback that can run a little bit. You need to account for that defensively or you're going to give up some yards. You said the body language for Miami has been very apparent. Breathing hard, hands on hips. They've been on the field for over 18 minutes in this game. Wilson lobs for Francois, another first down. A couple more yards before he's finally pushed out by Mike Williams. Maurice Francois, 21 on that play. And Bethune moves the football once again inside of Miami territory. Bethune Cookman staying with this, the bootleg action. Getting the ball out quickly in the flat, avoiding the sacks, avoiding the pressure, making easy throws to the quarterback. And again, this is Jackie Wilson's first start. We've seen him throw deep a couple of times, hasn't really had much going, but those short passes seem to be his bread and butter so far. Miami's been playing too deep, four deep a lot, so haven't been able to give up those big plays. You see how much longer the Miami defense has been on the field. Rodney Scott cuts it up the field. Inside of the red zone, Bethune Cookman, Gordon Futch the stop. Six yards on the play. You see the effects of being able to run there in the dirt of the infield, and Rodney Scott trying to have to double step. He's not able to put his foot in the ground like he would in grass and get vertical. I think he would have had a few more yards on a grass surface right there. Third time in the red zone today for Bethune Cookman. Looking for the end zone. Into the corner. KJ Stroud couldn't hold on. Telemac was in on the coverage. Lee Chambers came out with the football at the end of the play, but the incomplete pass. Stroud couldn't haul it in. Third and four coming up for Bethune. Corner route thrown into the end zone. Ball is placed nicely where only the offensive man can make a play. Unable to come up with it, but great ball placement. Stroud just couldn't keep the possession. He was a little bit shaken up after the play as well. Getting tended to for a moment, so he'll come off the field on this third and four. Again, Bethune hadn't done much these last couple of drives. Miami's defense finally got things going, but they've been on the field for so long in this first half. And Brian Jenkins saw Rodney Scott fumble at the goal line on the first Bethune drive. And then he saw his Wildcats come right back and score on a touchdown pass to Eddie Poole, but Miami has scored 14 unanswered here in the second quarter. Al Golden talks about conditioning and how much he wants that to be a staple of his program. His defensive leaders need to step up and show it right here. And they make a stand at the end of this first half. Third and four. Wilson pressured and Wilson brought down. Adewale Jomo and Anthony Ciccolo were in on the play. And a flag thrown at the end of the play. Jackie Wilson gets a little more experience. You can't take a sack right here. You've got, you've got the ball up there. You've got a chance for an easier field goal. We know that's not been the strong suit of Bethune Cookman. Don't take a sack. Give your field goal kicker a chance to make an easy three. No flag on the play, so apparently that flag was incidental. So Sven Hurt is on for the field goal from 38 yards. He's one for two on the season. He's missed from 48, and he's converted from 41. And Brian Jenkins wants time. Let's take a timeout and head it back to studio with Dari Noka. All right, guys, coming up at halftime, which is less than a football minute from now, Matt Stinchcomb joins me to show you what Georgia Tech is doing in Raleigh today against NC State. Also, Jordan Jefferson returns for LSU. Didn't throw a pass, but still made an impact. South Carolina and Auburn. South Carolina still unimpressive. We'll show you what Auburn's doing in Columbia at the half. Gentlemen.
Thank you very much, Dari. We'll have it for you in 23 seconds of game time here in this first half. 14-7 Miami with the lead. It will be a 38-yard field goal for Bethune if indeed they go for it. Remember last week, Ramon Buchanan had a blocked field goal against Kansas State. Buchanan was injured earlier in this first half, a right knee injury. He was on the sidelines. And Sven Hurd trying to convert just the fourth Bethune Cookman field goal in the last two seasons. Kowalski on the high snap, laid it down, and Hurd misses it wide right. Has not been a strong suit for Bethune. Andrew Ferris was the snapper, and you saw Brian Jenkins telling Ferris he's got to have a better snap on that fourth down attempt. High snap, but just doesn't get into it very well. Didn't come off his foot. Didn't have much of a chance from the get go. Maybe it wasn't the prettiest defensive drive for the Hurricanes, but it gets the job done. And Ja'Cory Harris content with receiving the ball in the second half. Bethune had the only score in the first quarter, but Miami, despite having its defense on the field for a very long time in that first half, scores 14 unanswered in the second on a couple of quick strikes. Gorgeous Sun Life Stadium. This side is Miami. Trying to turn things around after the rough start to the season. A 14-7 lead for the Hurricanes as we send it to the studio for Sports Center U. Here's Dari Noka. Welcome to the All-State Game of the Week on ESPNU. From Sun Life Stadium, our All-State Game of the Week, a Miami lead of 14-7. As you are watching the ACC on ESPN. Georgia South Florida and along with former Boise State and Colorado head coach Dan Hawkins Adam Amin on hand. A couple of good plays for Miami. They got touchdowns in that second quarter to take a 14 7 lead but a sluggish first half especially to start for Al Golden's team. Al Golden's going to challenge these guys 19 yards rushing that ain't going to get it. Still going downtown I think to help the rushing game a little bit. Defense leaders got to step up. We had one big punt return, the rest of it kind of stagnant. Need to challenge these guys, get going. Meanwhile, Bethune Cookman, they had a great start to this ball game, scored an early touchdown, got into the red zone, did fumble the football at the goal line as well, had an opportunity to go up 14 0. But Bethune Cookman, you got to like the energy that they brought in that first half. They've done a pretty good job. If they don't fumble in the end zone, they make the field goal, they're ahead at halftime right, right. now. Well, we're going to see exactly what Brian Jenkins is going to do in terms of adjustments. The Fort Lauderdale native taking on the team that he rooted for when he was a kid. And Ja'Cory Harris. That deep drive, a 56-yard touchdown strike to Tommy Streeter. Tied up the game at seven apiece, and then the touchdown from Lamar Miller. And as Coach mentioned, not much on the ground for Miami in that first half as Travis Benjamin is back for the U. Sven Hurd lets it go. Benjamin inside of the 10. Has some room along the sidelines. Travis Benjamin with a good return out across the 40 yard line. Take a look at our first half stats. The time of possession really sticks out. Miami's defense was on the field for a long time, but they were able to avoid a little bit of disaster at the end of that first half, forcing a field goal that was missed. Yeah, the rushing yard sticks out to me. Your University of Miami, let, let's go. We need more 19 yards rushing right here. Lamar Middle, Miller did have the touchdown on the ground, but Ja'Cory Harris did most of the damage in terms of yardage. Over 100 yards passing in the first half. We'll go to Benjamin to try to pick up some more. Benjamin surveys after he picks up the first down. Nearly got the ball knocked from behind. Ryan Davis came from behind to try to knock that one loose, but Benjamin a first down catch and run. 
I think they're better when they mix it up. This is a great time right here. We want to take a shot. Kind of getting that 50 to 40 plus range right here. You got your reverse, your reverse pass, launch it down here. Keep that defense off balance. Ja'Cory Harris without an interception so far today. He's had an interception in six consecutive games. Here's number six, Lamar Miller. Pick up a four on that first down run. What I'd like to see out of Miller is get more than what's there. The great back has got to run somebody over, break a tackle, run by somebody. It's not just, okay, I got this many yards and the first guy got me. I think that shoulder's bothering him a lot more than he's probably letting on. Last week, injured it against Kansas State. Remember, Miller has had over 100 yards rushing in each of his first three games this season. Four on that play to set up second and six. Blitz being shown by Bethune Cookman. A pitch. Miller got a good block and has a seam. Lamar Miller to the house. 43 yard touchdown. Alan Hearns, not a lot of catches so far. He's been their leading receiver, but a great block on the perimeter there. Simple pitch play out here to the left-hand side, pulling around. Great execution. Bethune-Cookman playing a lot of man, don't have a lot of guys deep. That's why they're susceptible to the post throw earlier in the first half and the run around the end with nobody secondarily to help them. Two-score lead for Miami. Right out of the gates, off the blocks, hot here in the second half. Coach said it, 19 yards rushing in the first half. Miami needs something on the ground. This is what they got, a 43-yard run from Lamar Miller. Second touchdown of the day. Nobody does. The U looking a little bit more like the U to start this second half. Big time run for Miami to pick up a touchdown from Lamar Miller. Now four rushing touchdowns on the season. Two of them have come today. One a moment ago on this play. See here, Bethune Cookman got a lot of guys up around the line of scrimmage. And once you penetrate that, you got a fast guy, you've got problems. That's the same exact play they ran to the boundary the previous time where they're cracking down and leading around outside. Good design on offense by Miami. This is a Miami team that averages 150, make that 180 plus yards on the ground per game in their first three games so far. Had a bad first half rushing, but Lamar Miller breaks it open. Courtney Keith and Angelo Cabrera back to return as Jake Weichlaw, the Illinois native, it's set to kick off. Kickoff coverage for Miami, 10th in the country. Cabrera inside his own five. Nowhere to go. Short return. Casey Rogers was there. They'll be in the top five with that kind of coverage. A lot of speed, get the ball up in the air, let your guys go down there. It's very difficult to drive the length of the field every single time. Anytime you get inside the ball inside the 20, statistics are largely in your favor of not letting the offense score. Jackie Wilson, his first start of the season. Jamar Robinson has not been in this game. The Maryland transfer who started the first three Bethune-Cookman games. Wilson over 100 yards in the first half. Trying to do some good things on the ground as well. Wilson who started a couple of games last season. Bethune-Cookman had to replace a great quarterback in Matt Johnson. One of the top quarterbacks in the MEAC last year. It was an open race between Wilson and Robinson. Jordan Murphy, the tight end, with a first down catch. That's his third catch of the day, a 15-yard pickup. Following the same formula that they had at the first half. I thought it was great. Other than the fumble and the missed field goal, they should have been up at halftime. Sure. They're doing a nice job there with a the little play action and the nakeds and the bootlegs and keeping Miami off balance. Very good plan by Bethune-Cookman. Murphy had four catches on the season coming into today. He and Maurice Francois and Eddie Poole with three catches apiece. A dozen completions for Jackie Wilson. First and ten from just past the 30-yard line. 
Rodney Scott, 22 yards rushing for number 22 in the first half. He'll pick up a couple as JoJo Nicholas comes up to make the stop. Quarterback Jackie Wilson's been limping a little bit. We'll see that how, how that affects his ability to run. That's the beauty of you got a running quarterback, but they take too many shots, get kind of dinged up, and then that would limit his effectiveness. Last season, six rushing touchdowns for Wilson. He does a lot of damage on the ground. He faces a second and eight. Quick throw to Jonathan Moment, the fullback. Hit shy of the 40-yard line by Jimmy Gaines. Bethune-Cookman taking on a BCS team for the first time in its program's history and a lot of FBS and BCS transfers you see there. Rodney Scott's one of them. Jamar Robinson has not been seen today. These guys have been in these stadiums, face this kind of competition, so they're not going to blink. Jamar Robinson made a few starts for Maryland before Danny O'Brien, who's been one of the best quarterbacks in the ACC, really came on last year. Third and three for Wilson. And Maurice Francois had no shot to catch that ball. A short throw and fourth down. Miami has not been playing a lot of pressure. They did come off the edge there and bring five that time. They've normally been rushing either three or four on third down. So I thought that throw was forced a little bit. They weren't able to complete that flat like they have in the past. Miami forces a three and out, and Travis Benjamin back to return his Corey Kowalski kick. Let's hope Corey got a reinforcement of where to punt the ball. Kind of a rugby-style kick. We've seen him actually run out of a punt formation this year. This one will be down to the 32-yard line. Waves of the Atlantic Ocean here in Miami. Beautiful South Florida. Hurricanes have the football when you come back. We fired up by Kingsford Charcoal. Oh, you gotta love it. Miami in front, 21-7 outside of Sun Life Stadium. They say it's all about the U. Hurricanes with a good start to this second half. Really playing like the team Coach Golden wants to be, and I think what people expect Miami explosive, right. dynamic, energetic, high level of intensity. How's that for explosiveness? Three touchdowns in the last six offensive snaps after a really slow start offensively to this game. Definitely want to continue that trend here. Corey Harris with pressure from behind, but Harris gets a couple of blocks. Sandalins with great pursuit. Reggie Sandalins, the senior from Miami, bringing the heat after Harris tried to keep that play alive. Tried to come back, go play action, similar to what they did before. Didn't have anything and no check down available. Ja'Cory needs to manage this right here and just get the ball, and throw it away, and come back. And second and 15, that's tough for any play caller. That's a mature quarterback needs to take his take his his losses and just get the ball out of bounds there. Most starts of any Bethune-Cookman player on this roster, Reggie Sandilins, his 14th career start. Lamar Miller. Close to the 35-yard line. Let's take it to the studios. What's going on, Darian Oka? All right, guys. Well, uh, let's discuss Georgia Tech and NC10. We'll keep you both. Just over 10 minutes to go here in the third quarter. Bethune Cookman took a 7-0 lead, 21 unanswered from Miami. Third and eight for the Hurricanes. First down catch. Ball comes loose. Daniel Rhodes ends up with a football in his hands. But did Clive Walford have possession? That's going to be the question on this play. 
Gene Fenn or John Luce. Incomplete pass. Well, Rhodes was there as Fenn or jumped in. Good job, fine. I just thought Clyde was just a little casual right here. Doesn't really see that ball in, doesn't tuck it away. You need to grab that thing like it's a big bag of money and hold on to it. I just thought he was too casual. Coach mentioned during the week he wanted to get him the football because he is so well athletic, but put the ball on the ground like that, you're going to limit your opportunities. And we were going to wonder if Brian Jenkins was going to challenge this. The running on the field is under further review. What did you think on that first look, Coach? I thought it was incomplete. I just don't think he really gets it. Does the fact that he worked up field a little bit play into that at all? I just don't think he had it totally secured. Okay. See, just that's what I was saying. I don't think he really snatched it and pulled it to his chest. Clive Walford, the redshirt freshman from Bell Glade. Third career catch for Walford. He had a dropped pass in the end zone last week on that final drive against Kansas State. That would have led to a touchdown. And obviously we talked about it earlier, Kansas State coming up with that goal line stand last week against Ja'Cory Harris in Miami. And now Golden said he wanted to get his tight ends a little bit more involved in today's game. And Walford, the first tight end to really get into the action for Miami. He and Chase Ford have been the top two tight ends in terms of pass receptions for the Hurricanes. But again, the ruling on the field is an incomplete pass. Clyde's a young guy, freshman. He needs to take advantage of his opportunities here. Gene Fanor, jarred it loose, and Daniel Rhodes ended up with the football. This is probably our best look at it. I just don't think you're, there's going to be enough evidence to overturn it. And that's the big emphasis. There has to be indisputable video evidence to try to either make a play stand, to confirm it or to reverse it. The other key is don't get tackled in the infield because your arm's going to get all tore up and the That's trainer's right. going to have to wrap you up. That's right. Stay alive and get on the grass. Now the Marlins finished up their season earlier in the week. So the MLB postseason gets underway. And they still have not filled in the infield. Miami will go on the road to Blacksburg next week. And this is the end of a little stretch where the Hurricanes play at home for three consecutive games. So once they bounce, they'll have a chance to refill that infield. And this is what is being reviewed right now. Ja'Cory Harris finding Clive Walford on a third down play. Remember, this was a third down play. The ruling on the field is an incomplete pass. Gene Fanor was the one who was there to jar the ball loose. Daniel Rhodes ended up with the football. Our ACC crew is taking a look at that play, which again would either be fourth down for Miami if it is indeed an incomplete pass, or if the ball comes loose, they're going to overturn it. It would be Bethune-Cookman football inside of Miami territory. Offensive coordinator Jed Fish is on the phone with Clive there. Saying if you would have locked that thing up. We wouldn't be going through this right now. Here comes the ruling. After further review. The ruling on the field is reversed. It was a catch and a fumble with a recovery in the immediate vicinity by Bethune Cookman. It'll be first and two on the 45 for Bethune Cookman. First Miami turnover of the day. This is what Bethune Cookman did better than any other team in the country last year. That's forced turnovers. Gene Fanor jarred it loose. Daniel Rhodes picks it up. Bethune Cookman takes over. While Bethune Cookman was really good last year with turnover margin, they've been okay today. Miami has struggled. 
That is the number one stat. Everybody talks about what about this, that. The turnover margin is right. critical in every single game, and you certainly don't want to be minus four on the season. And Bethune Cookman at the Miami 45. Jackie Wilson to throw on first down. Able to connect with Anthony Jordan. And it's out near the 40 yard line. Pick up a four. Anthony Ciccolo there to make the stop. His first start as a hurricane. Second and six. Miami most of the game has had a soft corner, meaning that guy back pedals out of there a lot. So those flat throws have been there. Bethune Cookman has taken advantage of it. We'll see if Miami counters the squat in the corner in the flat here. Wilson goes right back to it. Andronicus Lovitz. A few yards shy of the first down. Chicolo there again for the stop. Love it, the redshirt junior from Gainesville. It's been little used over the course of the season, but right back to their bread and butter for Jackie Wilson. Those short passes. Get it out of your hands. Let your guys go. They've made plays in space. Awesome job by Chicolo turning and running there. Your defensive lineman making a play down the field like that. That shows a lot about his heart and his motor. Bethune, 41% on third down this season. They're 5 for 11 today. They need just three. Wilson fires for it, and he's got the first down to Eddie Poole. His top target with a six-yard pickup on his fourth catch of the day and a first down for Bethune-Cookman. This is where they're, they're most efficient in the great, first half. Great job. They ran this play in the first half. This time he checks it down inside. They had great success throwing that ball outside. Great adjustment, good read. No work from the 32. Gene Dessen off the line. Wilson will throw. He's looking for pull. And he had at least a foot in bounds. 19 yards on the catch for Eddie Poole. Lee Chambers finally knocked him out. Back to back catches. Coming field blitz right here, bringing two guys off the edge. They were able to catch him corner backpedaling there. Nice pickup by Bethune Cookman. Good job recognizing the blitz and getting it out. And the transfer from Rutgers who came over with head coach Brian Jenkins had that left foot in bounds as Lee Chambers was in on the coverage. Chambers a little bit slow to get up after the play. Brian Jenkins used his connections at Rutgers to bring over a handful of former Scarlet Knights. Talk about Brian Jenkins. He talks so much about Greg Schiano and how much of a role Greg Schiano played in the development of Brian Jenkins as a head coach. He's had a lot of great guys that have influenced him. The Harbaugh family has been big for Brian Jenkins, but he said his one year with Greg Schiano as the wide receivers coach in 09 really propelled him to become a head coach and kind of model himself after Schiano. Greg is very organized, very detailed from top to bottom. He's a a uh, great defensive mind as well as an excellent CEO and a guy of high integrity, high character. I've uh, been around Joe Paterno, comes down through that lineage. No surprise there to me. Let's kick it to the studio in Darinoka. All right, guys, time now for our AT&T All-America Player of the Week update. How about Arkansas quarterback by 101 yards? Text vote trip to the National Championship. <laughs> Seven and a half to go in the third. Second down coming up for Bethune Cookman inside of the red zone. Brian Jenkins has seen his team with a fumble at the goal line, a touchdown, and a missed field goal in the red zone today. Right cornerback for the Hurricanes, Mike Williams, limping off the field. We'll see if Bethune Cookman wants to take advantage of that personnel matchup. And Thomas Finney, the freshman, is in at cornerback. Jackie Wilson has time, checks down. Jordan inside of the 10, puts his shoulder down near the first down marker. Sean Spence brought him down as Jordan has had a really good game today. Been very impressed with his physical nature. He pounds guys, he knocks guys down when he runs. I think you'd like to see that from Lamar Miller when he gets a little more healthy for Miami. Jordan just a redshirt freshman from Atlanta. Really has been little used. Nine carries on the season coming in. 
And he's got a couple of touchdowns. He's made the most of his opportunities. Bethune trying to make the most of this red zone chance. Third and one. Wilson will pitch it. Here comes Jordan. Telemac made the initial contact, and Miami will make the stop. Fourth and short. Options a great opportunity down here in the red zone, but you'll see they bring a guy off the edge for the quarterback and another one for the back, so it's not read correctly. Great when the quarterback's not accounted for, but they have two for two there on defense. We've seen a missed field goal in the red zone today from 38. Bethune is going to go for it on fourth and two. Jordan trying to dive ahead. This may depend on the spot at the bottom of that pile. Only needed two yards, needed to get inside of the three yard line. Well, this is a momentum shifting play right now. Bethune needs it to stay in this game, it feels like right now. I like Coach Jenkins going for it, cutting it loose, getting after it. He talked about Wildcat football previous to this. This is, this is his style. Get out, get after it. Let's not hold back. Not by much. But a first down for Bethune Cookman. They were very good on fourth down last season. One of the top teams in the BAC on fourth down. Bethune Cookman, an FCS school, ranked in the top 25 in the FCS poll earlier this season. Eddie Poole lined up one on one. It's Mike Williams out there. See if they give him a chance. Top of your screen. Francois in motion on first and goal. Wilson will keep it. Wilson spun into the end zone for a touchdown. Great answer by the Wildcats. Coming back in with that zone replay. This time he just pulls it and follows it. You see his little gimpy right there. He's banged up. Going to spend some time in the training room tomorrow, but he's playing his heart out right now. First rushing touchdown of the season for Wilson. The seventh of his career. Sven Hearn puts it through, and it's a one-score game. Miami made a statement to start this second half with a quick touchdown. But how about the Wildcats and Jackie Wilson, his first start of the season, bringing the Wildcats back within seven. Brian Jenkins wants it to keep going for the Wildcats. The pump. A hard-earned three-yard touchdown for Jackie Wilson, who's taking a pounding a little bit today. He's on the sidelines getting worked on, but his Wildcats are back within his score. After our game, ESPNU's coverage of college football continues. Sean Renfrey and Duke taking on, if you don't know who he is, you'll know, T.Y. Hilton of FIU. 7 o'clock tonight, college football primetime presented by 5-Hour Energy, part of tailgate week, fired up by Kingsford Charcoal. Gorgeous view of Sun Life Stadium. Miami with a quick touchdown to start this second half, but Bethune with a very impressive answer. Nine play, 45 yard drive after the turnover from Miami. And this is why Al Golden has put so much emphasis on ball security. Bethune Cookman able to take advantage. Travis Benjamin from the 10. Benjamin's got some room. Looking for a seam. Yeah, good play for Bethune Cookman. Randy James got in on him. There's T.Y. Hilton. See the all-purpose yards. He is an excellent kick and punt returner. Bur Last year in the Little Caesars Bowl, he returned a kickoff 90 yards for a touchdown. Ja'Cory Harris takes over for Miami, up seven. Good return from Travis Benjamin to start it at the 38-yard line. Lamar Miller, they've enjoyed this pitch play to Miller. He's had the touchdown in that... Long touchdown run as well today on that pitch. Not much room to run as Martin Emery the third made the stop for no gain. Wasn't exactly the same formation that they'd used before. Only a single receiver out there. They were able to kind of crack down and pull the tackle before. 
I'd like to see Miami stay again, getting vertical, setting up your running game, and, and get some of this speed out there and let Ja'Cory go to it. They'll empty out the backfield, sending Miller to the wide side. On second down, Harris keeps the play alive. Trying to get rid of it, a low throw, was it caught? Travis Benjamin was there, and he picked it off the deck. Close to the first down marker. Good play by Ja'Cory Harris to keep it alive as Benjamin made the catch. I thought he got a little bit antsy early on. He made a great play at the end, but probably could have stood in there just a little bit longer. He had decent protection. Excellent job, Travis Benjamin, coming back to the football. Ryan Lewis going after Ja'Cory Harris. Much more manageable situation, third and one. That pitch play to Miller again. Davis is in pursuit. Miller keeps it alive for a first down. Dragged out by Reggie Sandilands and then a flag at the end of the play. Sandilands came, came back to that scheme. Yep. Got two receivers cracking down and pulling the tackle. The Thune playing it a little bit better here. There you see the face mask against Sandilands. And this is going to tack on some extra yardage at the end of the play after Miller earns the first down on third and short. Been impressed with Bethune Cookman's ability to run to the football and their attitude getting to the football today. That's been impressive. Yards have come tough by it for Miami. They had the one explosion play to start the half, but they've done a pretty good job against the run. the face mask on the defense 15 yard penalty and for automatic first down look for a launch right here Adam great spot on the field again you kind of get around that 40 good chance to get vertical three tight end set here for Miami they've done good things with these big packages Harris, time to throw. Incomplete. He was looking for Asante Cleveland. Joshua Barrett was in on the coverage. Cleveland kind of got tripped up. That brings up second down. Uh, just like you thought, they do take a shot. Got a little momentum going on your side. You want to loosen them up. That's generally the area, and I think most defensive coordinators will tell you, heads up, watch for the shot here. Feet just tangled up. That's a good no call. Incidental contact. Sure with Daniel Rhodes Barrett searching for the pick senior from Williamsville New York second down and an eye formation here with Higgins in as Lamar Miller gets the handoff and he keeps it going across the 20 yard line inside of the Bethune Cookman red zone 18 yard pickup for Lamar Miller how about that 19 yards rushing for Miami in the first half and Miller has really exploded here in this second half They've had more opportunities for sure. They weren't on the field that much early on in the game, so that hurt them, and they're finding success getting the ball outside. You saw the numbers for Miller before that pickup. And just shy of 100 yards now, Lamar Miller. Play fake to Miller. Pressure coming, and Harris gets rid of the football. Outside of the tackle box as Ryan Davis brought the heat. Nice job getting rid of the ball. That's what you want right here. You Just appreciate that your... as a coach, right? Yeah, that, that's managing the football game. Sometimes it's not what you do, it's what you don't do. Don't take a sack, don't do something stupid. You're in the red zone, you got a chance to score. Throw the ball away, second 10's fine. And again, Ja'Cory Harris. An interception prone quarterback in his career without a pick today. Second and ten. They send Walford in motion and a pitch to Miller. Lamar Miller over 100 yards rushing for the seventh time in his career. Let's take a look at Ja'Cory Harris and what he has done in his career. 
We talk about turnovers. Yeah, at times that's been an issue for him. But Al Golden said, listen, the quarterback's going to throw interceptions. As long as Jacory doesn't throw too many of them this year, and he's got three so far, we're going to be in good shape. Jacory has been very good today. He had a tough go the last half of last year, basically sat out by and large the last five games and then had to miss the first game this year. So hopefully he can get some consistency going and develop that, that uh, effectiveness that they want. Trying to convert in the red zone on third and five. Roll to the right and an incomplete pass. Alan Hearns was in the area. A minute 56 to go here in the third quarter. Miami has scored 21. Bethune has 14. Sun Life Stadium in Miami, Florida. First time Bethune Cookman is taking on a BCS automatic qualifying school. Miami, after an emotional loss last week to Kansas State on a goal line stand, trying to work back to 500. A 30 yard attempt coming for Jake Wyclaw, who's made all three of his field goal attempts this season. From the left hash mark, he angles it right through. A 10 point Miami lead as the junior from New Lenox, Illinois. It's a field goal for the fourth consecutive game. Good answer. Not a touchdown, but to be able to answer the momentum that Bethune Cookman presented by scoring on the other drive. Come back in, manage the situation, get a few points. Now the defense is really needs to step up here. I, I think Bethune Cookman by and large has done a nice job the whole game mixing it up particularly those throws in the flat and some of those quarterback runs like to see Miami step up and see the leadership and let's get a three and out right here and make a statement. Lamar Miller had a rough go at it in the first half on the ground but this was set up by a long punt return. This was in the second quarter. Lamar Miller on the pitch and they like that pitch play. He turned it upfield pretty quickly to start this second half. 43 yard touchdown. That made it a 21 to 7 game. And Bethune, Lamar Miller. Bethune Cookman has been playing a lot of man coverage on the outside. So when those receivers come down to crack, the DB suck down with them. So that creates a soft edge and then they get the tackle around outside. So uh, a good scheme by Miami against man coverage. Angelo Cabrera with a foot in the end zone takes it out. Won't get to the 20. Great coverage from Miami. Let's go to some studio coverage. Dari Noka. All right, guys, how about a sports center right now presented by Discover Baylor and Kansas State? This just moments 42 38. That's Thanks, Dari. Bethune down 10 takes over from the 16. Jackie Wilson on the last drive with a short run for a touchdown, a flag thrown. Whistling this first down play dead. Third game on the offense. Five yards remains first down. It's the quirks of having a new quarterback. First start for Jackie Wilson, a delay of game call. Brian Jenkins taking on a BCS school with Bethune Cookman for the first time. The first time these two schools are ever meeting. That's a killer penalty for a coach that right. that's on the staff and just trying to get organized get out there. First and 15. Rodney Scott blocking out of the backfield. Wilson. Ajomo had the initial pressure and he got plenty of help from Marcus Robinson. Six yard loss. And now Bethune Cookman pinned at their own five. A Jomo, who is listed as an end, has been playing inside. He gets inside pressure. Could have been a face mask call right there. I think that's why he let up. But normally an end, he's been playing inside to help get a little bit more pressure with that front. Boy, that was a pretty clear a Jomo face mask that did not get called. Second and 21. Scott. Nowhere to go. Robinson, the initial coverage. Denzel Perriman came over to help him out. Third and long coming. Tough on second and third and long. Every defensive coordinator in country is thinking screen or draw right there. It's, it's difficult. 
they had a good spy and got through the blocking, be able to make a play there. Now the crux is try to get a little yardage for your punt team because if you're backed up here, it makes it very difficult for your punt team to have enough room to get the ball off. They need to get to the 26. Rodney Scott just to give Corey Kowalski a little bit of room as our third quarter comes to an end. Miami has looked much better since that first quarter. A couple of good defensive stops for Miami in that third quarter. A 10 point hurricane lead. Bethune punts to start the fourth. Wednesday night volleyball at 7 and 9 on ESPNU. First half, Bethune Cookman had some good things working. You see what they were able to do on offense. Eddie Poole from Jackie Wilson to give Bethune a 7 0 lead. We were tied at 7 when Travis Benjamin brought back a punt for 44 yards, setting up this Lamar Miller touchdown. Miller, who was injured last week against Kansas State, did make the start today. That touchdown gave Miami a 14 7 lead. That was the score at halftime. Then in the second half, hot off the blocks, Lamar Miller in the second half. Quick strike and a long touchdown run of 43 yards. Made it a two score game. Good effort by Bethune Cookman to drive right back, score a touchdown from Jackie Wilson on the ground. And look at our Taco Bell game summary. Lamar Miller, fourth consecutive game with 100 yards. It's the first guy in a long time for Miami to do that. Jackie Wilson has played pretty decently. DeCorey Harris has found it a little here in this second half. And Miami's defense has come up with another stand. They might be gunning for a block here. Corey Kowalski back to punt to start the fourth quarter. Miami going with two returners so they can't punt away from them. And that's going to be a flag. Easy flag is going to be thrown. Devon Johnson was back to return and he got hammered by Martin Emery the third. Now we saw in an earlier game today or last night actually where uh, defensive back from Utah State was ejected from the game. That's right. I think that play right there is even more heinous than that one last night. I just think that you've got to protect that punt returner right there. This That's has been a an dangerous issue. situation. Right. This has been an issue for Bethune Cookman this season. They've taken a lot of dumb penalties at times. Kick catch interference against number 45 of the kicking team. 15 yards from the spot of the foul. First down. Bad play for Bethune. Good field position for Miami. Let's go to the studio in Darinoka. All right, guys, let's update uh, NC State and Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech up just a touchdown. Or when... Georgia Tech trying to move to 5 and 0. Oh. How about the Yellow Jackets just throwing the ball over the yard out of the triple option? The wow. number one offense in the country coming out of a triple option. First and 10 for Miami inside of the 40 yard line. Lamar Miller can't escape the pressure from Fields and Sandalins. Second down coming up, no gain. The penetration of Bethune Cookman has really hurt that inside zone game of Miami. That's why those tosses outside and the crackbacks and pullers have, have helped. They've not been able to get much going up inside. Well, Miami perhaps trying to run a little bit more clock here in this fourth quarter up by 10. Lamar Miller's had a very good second half. Harris finds Benjamin. Deion Hanks, the stop after a pickup of seven yards. ESPNU is the home for passionate college football fans as our experts break down the top schools in the country in a weekly three-hour special. The experts on ESPNU Tuesdays at 1 and 7 Eastern. Former North Carolina head coach Butch Davis on the show this week. My man Hawk's going to be there too, right? I will be in the house. You will be there. Miami here on a third and three. Hurricanes just two for seven on third down today. 
They've got the 10 point lead. Trying to run a little bit more clock. But Harris is going to go to the air. Touchdown, Tommy Streeter. His second of the day. Two touchdowns in Tommy Streeter's career coming into this ball game today, but the junior from Miami has a pair of them against Bethune. The impressive thing about this is he audibles to this, checks at the line of scrimmage. They got two safeties back here, and then he checks to the fade right, route right there and able to hit him up the sideline. Great throw, but even more impressive to me was the check to the play. Substitution infraction on the defense, 12 men on the field, be half the distance to the gold, redo the try. What a day for Tommy Streeter. Got his first career start last week against Kansas State. And with Alan Hearns and Travis Benjamin, LaRon Bird, guys that get a lot of attention at the wide receiver spot. Tommy Streeter, the old high school teammate of Ja'Cory Harris, has done the brunt of the damage on the receiving end of Ja'Cory's throws today. Hey, and tip your hat to Ja'Cory Harris. No interceptions, couple of touchdown throws. That's what he needs. Get a little confidence, a little rhythm. He has the weapons. Tommy Streeter is one of them. Ja'Cory Harris looks left. Tommy Streeter right there. Second TD of the game, Miami up by 17. Coverage provided to you by Goodyear. Everything Goodyear has learned. Making tires that go the distance inspires what they roll into yours. Goodyear, more driven. Getting loud inside of Sun Life Stadium in Miami as the Hurricanes have taken a 17 point lead. Trying to bounce back after a rough loss in the final minute last week against Kansas State. Angelo Cabrera from the six. Can't escape. Good play by Denzel Perriman. But a flag is thrown at the end of the play. Miami's kick coverage has been very solid over the course of the day today. It has been a busy day for the officials. And it's against Bethune Cookman. Let's take a look at our good hands play brought to you by Allstate. What a day, coach, for Tommy Streeter. Great to get a little confidence going. No safety in the middle of the field. That was a very good throw by Ja'Cory Harris. Great job fitting the ball in between the safety and the corner there. Touchdown catches of 56, the longest of Streeter's career. And a moment ago, 27. That's the type of day it's been for Streeter. He just heard the penalty as well. And against Bethune Cookman, that is their 10th penalty of the day. And the Wildcats have had double digit penalties in every single game this year. Already nine in the first three quarters in the 10th just a moment ago. And Jackie Wilson, a first down run and a little bit more ran into his own man. Banged into Tyree Green on the play with Jackie Wilson with a good run. There's Green. First down under 13 minutes to go here in the fourth quarter Bethune. It has been a quick strike off at the time. They, they, they put up 63 in week number one against an inferior opponent in Prairie View A&M. But today they've been more methodical. I think they might have to pick up the tempo a little bit to try to get back into this game. Looks like they're trying to go a little bit faster here. Jonathan Moment, a good block for Jackie Wilson, who finds Andronicus Lovett out of the backfield. Play there for Bethune Cookman. Jackie Wilson converts a first down throw. Marcus Robinson pushed him out. 
going to the sidelines for Lovett, the senior from Gainesville. Jackie Wilson's had a pretty productive day, getting the ball out of his hands, throwing the ball short. He loves those short passes. 19 completions, most of them short. Another one to Eddie Poole. Not much room to go. Sixth catch of the day for Eddie Poole. No gain. Let's go to the studios in Dari Doka. All right, guys. Georgia Tech, NC State. Wolfpack down a couple of scores. Must 8 o'clock Eastern tonight, Dari. Very excited about Nebraska's Big Ten debut and a very tough place to play. Camp Randall. Love it. Out of the backfield again. Keeps it alive for maybe an extra yard or two before he's brought down by Jordan Futch. Well, the Thune Cookman moving the ball well and keeping it to the sidelines. Had a lot of success throwing the ball in the flat. They're staying with it. And you're able to get the ball stopped, or the, the clock stopped as well. Wholesale substitution from Miami. They're kind of huffing and puffing, hands on the hips. They're a little bit disorganized right now. They've been on the field, Miami's defense, for over 31 minutes in this game. Looking for a stand, and Miami may need to call time. You saw an extra defender trying to get to the fee, uh, to the sidelines. Well, Golden uses the first time out of the second half. Third and four for Bethune. Third down coming up for Bethune. Cookman down by 17 with 11.22 to go here in the fourth quarter. Monday, Jesse Palmer and David Pollock provide an engaging and interactive look at the past week's action. They'll set the scene for the upcoming week's big games. Palmer and Pollock, ESPNU Mondays, 1 and 9 Eastern. Miami has been tested a little bit defensively today. Been on the field for more than a half hour of game time. Had to use a timeout trying to readjust their troops. Third and four coming up. No problem for Sean Spence. Wraps up Jackie Wilson and brings him down. Miami didn't look, too, didn't look too tired there, Coach. Miami with a rare pressure. They have, they have not been bringing extra guys. They do this time. You'll see down the bottom of the screen, bringing an extra guy off the edge. Typically, they've been in a four or three man rush. They've not pressured a bunch on third down. I like the change up, though, trying to make something happen a sack, a turnover, fumble. Here you see Sean Spence, just a great leader, making a lot of plays on every basic trophy watch they have out there, and rightfully so. Team leader in tackles, tackles for losses, sacks. That's six sacks for Miami. They had six on the season coming in. Fair catch signaled at the 31-yard line by Devon Johnson. I like the change up with Miami going with the two returners. They're trying to punt away from Travis Benjamin. Even if you catch it right there, it's better letting the ball hit the ground and go back. And Sean Spence forces the fourth down, and now Ja'Cory Harris gets to take over. Well, let's see if Ja'Cory Harris even comes in now. And Harris is going back to the sideline. So with 10.26 to go and a 17-point lead, we're going to see Morris. Stephen Morris is into the ball game. Remember, he started week number one against Maryland. Didn't have a terrible game by any means. Those numbers from that game against Maryland did have a couple of picks. And his first throw is caught by Alan Hearns. Hearns, who has been very quiet today. The top target for Ja'Cory Harris this season. Nice thing about the substitution right here, Adam, I like. Is Ja'Cory Harris leaves the game on a touchdown throw. Zero interceptions today. That's, That's right. huge for him. He's able to go and take a seat, just having a great day with a lot of confidence. Eduardo Clements is going to get a couple of carries today. Gets the call and runs it for a first down. 13-yard pickup after the 17-yard catch and run by Hearns. So Clements and Hearns have been quiet today. Clements gets the call and makes the best of it. Ja'Cory Harris, who had a interception thrown in six consecutive games. The last time he did not have an interception was last October against Duke. October 16th of 2010. But no picks today. Couple of touchdowns. Didn't throw it as much as he usually had, but... A very efficient day for Ja'Cory Harris. Big day for Travis Benjamin as well. His sixth catch. A 
of the afternoon turning into an evening now with nine and a half to go in the fourth. Miami's done a nice job of those run throw options there where he can hand it or if he likes the numbers outside he can flip it outside with a guy with the speed of Travis Benjamin any way you get him the ball is good. Al Golden. First season as Miami head coach said he wanted a culture change here at Miami. Already did it at Temple in his five seasons there. As Clements gets another call, trying to get to the edge. Eduardo Clements for the pylon. Looked a little bit short, he was by about a yard and a half. Same fly sweep action that we saw in the first half. See Travis Benjamin faking the sweep to the right, hand in the zone, played back, good bounce. In an unbalanced formation there, so you have a little bit of a shorter edge over there on the left side. It was Brandon Washington who sealed it for him. There's Jed Fish, the offensive coordinator, his first year. A lot of NFL experience for Jed Fish, nine years as a coach at the NFL level. Eduardo Clemens, for the first time in his career, has a touchdown. All Miami as Clemens takes it in from a yard out. A couple of really nice runs by Clemens on a quick strike drive with Stephen Morris in there at quarterback. Good way to finish. Don't get sloppy. Right. Let's finish this game. And it's all Miami. It's a 24 point lead. 16th career game played for Eduardo Clements, the sophomore from Miami in front of the home crowd. Puts in six for the first time in his career. He set it up with that nice run and then punched it in. Touchdown Miami. The Palmer and Pollock Show, Mondays at 1 and 9 on ESPNU. Touchdowns apiece for Ja'Cory Harris and Lamar Miller. The Hurricanes needed some leadership. Trying to bounce back after a tough loss last week. And they've done big things here in the second half. Angelo Cabrera. Just around the 20-yard line, Denzel Perriman. The stop, let's go to Dari Noka. All right, guys, just a reminder, coming up, top of the hour, T.Y. Hilton and FIU take on Duke. Hilton, if you haven't seen him, one of the best playmakers, a speedster that maybe you don't know about, but watch him and FIU and Duke coming up in less than half an hour. College football primetime tonight, and, man, T.Y. Hilton just electrifying. Return man, receiver. People finally got a chance to see him against Louisville earlier this year in FIU. Trying to make a little bit of noise. David Blackwell is in at quarterback for Bethune Cookman. And a first down run of six yards for David Blackwell, a sophomore from Fort Lauderdale. Junior college transfer. Did not play last season due to a transfer issue. Made an appearance in week number one in that blowout over Prairie View AM. But has not been in the fold really since. It's been. Robinson, who made the start in the first three games, the Maryland transfer, and today it was Jackie Wilson who got Bethune off to a pretty good start. Scored the first touchdown of the game, held Miami in check in the first quarter as Andronicus Lovett picks up a first down. But since then, Miami has been big. The Hurricanes did not score on their first three drives. Since then, on their last seven drives, five touchdowns, four between those two guys, and actually all three of those guys have accounted for all five touchdowns, plus a field goal in the last seven drives. The touchdown club. Oh, that's clever. 
Look at you. <laughs> First and ten from the 31 yard line for Bethune Cookman. There goes Blackwell, a first down run. Finally wrapped up at the ankles by A.J. Highsmith. Good run, 16 yards there for Blackwell. So, big opportunity for Blackwell to show what he can do. Brian Jenkins said, my quarterback race is open every single week. And that's why we saw Jackie Wilson today. Maybe David Blackwell can make an impact. This situation for both sides, you want to finish regardless of the score. They're looking for guys to step up and make plays and keep playing regardless of the situation. Right. Option read for Lovett. Cross midfield, spun down. Seven minutes to go. Especially for Coach Jenkins here. He wants to see his guys show their courage for the entire 60 minutes. First time taking on a BCS opponent in Bethune Cookman's program history. The big task. Everybody knew that. Blackwell keeps it for another first down run. Finally chased down and tripped up by Tyrone Cornelius. But David Blackwell moving the football pretty well on the ground. They've been defective the whole day against that zone read. One thing that Coach Golden won't like tomorrow is sitting in there looking in that run defense, which was not great coming in. And today was not necessarily stellar either. I think he still wants to see some improvement from these guys up front. Bethune with 149 yards rushing today, and a lot of that from their QBs. And Blackwell will throw. Three for five on the season. Looking at the sidelines for Patrick Harris. We're talking about the rushing for Bethune Cookman. That was a really good rusher at Notre Dame. Autry Denson, he's the running back's coach here at Bethune Cookman. What an impact that guy made for the Irish in his college days. Yeah, and what an impact he's making for Bethune Cookman. I was really impressed with his emphasis on developing these guys as young men on and off the field and his total player concept. Andronicus love it. No gain. This is what Denson did while he was at Notre Dame. Over 4,000 career yards. Still nobody has done it better since Autry Denson left. And his mark is showing because they have run the football. I really like the physical style that they've shown. Scott and Tronicus love it. Also, Isidore Jackson is under the tutelage of Denson. This team has some good running backs in Bethune Cookman. Third and ten for the Wildcats. Should try to stay in this game. Blackwell deep over the middle. Great defensive coverage by Andrew Swayze, the junior. Got his fingertips on that football to force a fourth down. Well, the youngster got lucky there. He tried to fit that ball in. He had no chance of making that, that throw. Safety sitting right there. He's lucky that it either wasn't intercepted or he sent one of his buddies to the training room tomorrow. They'll give Blackwell an opportunity to go for it here on fourth down. But Brian Jenkins may want to talk it over first. But we'll take a timeout as well. 5.21 left here in the fourth quarter. Miami up by 24 points. You ready? ESPN News College Football All-State Game of the Week is brought to you by All-State. Shop less, get more. Make one call to an All-State agent. Throwing it up for the U. And the U up 24. And Marcus Robinson putting David Blackwell down. They went for it on fourth down. A turnover. Seventh sack of the day for the Hurricanes. Three for Marcus Robinson. Brian Jenkins and the Wildcats turn it over and Miami takes over. Normally in a given game, you'd like to see typical goal is around three sacks. So that's certainly excellent getting seven. Remember the Hurricanes had six in their first three games. Seven of them today against this Bethune-Cookman Wildcat offensive line. Stephen Morris, his second drive as a quarterback in this game. We'll flip it out for a gain to Kendall Tompkins. 
I like what Miami's doing here, mixing it up. Some might think, well, just come out there and run it every down, but let the guy throw the football, get in a groove. Al Golden, what a phenomenal job he did at Temple. 42 years of age, New Jersey native. Turned that Temple program around. I thought it was kind of ironic that Temple beat Maryland, something that Miami could not do here in 2011. And Temple didn't just beat Maryland. They they put it put it to Maryland. Steve Adazio uh, spent a lot of time with Urban Meyer. He knows what's going on. That's not what Al Golden wanted to see. Stephen Morris jumped back on top of it after fumbling the football. But this is a big bounce back for Al Golden in Miami because next week and two out of the next three weeks it is a really really tough test Virginia Tech and Clemson going on right now Georgia Tech's going to move to 5 and 0 oh. North Carolina is no slouch by any means so it's going to be a tough next couple of weeks for Miami we had North Carolina a couple weeks ago and I know they had a tough battle with Georgia Tech last week they're a very good football team right. and don't forget they they did not perform poorly especially in the first half last week against Georgia Tech the number one offense in the nation Third and 11, he'll pitch it out to Clemens, who picked up his first career touchdown in the last drive. He will not get anything there. And fourth down coming up for Miami. Yes. Algafar Lane makes the stop. Another Rutgers transfer. There's the defensive line today for Miami. They have done very impressive things with those seven sacks. Dalton Botts will come on to punt this one away. Patrick Harris will head back to return. Fair catch signaled by Harris at the 25. 313 left and take a look at this. Our aerial coverage today provided to you by Goodyear. Everything Goodyear has learned. Making tires that go the distance inspires what they roll into yours. Goodyear more driven. Gorgeous South Florida. Our buddies in the blimp will take it down to FIU tonight as well. We'll have Florida International and Duke coming up near the top of the hour. Both sides looking to finish. Have a bunch of substitutions in there. New guys, chance for them to get on tape, get on film, get evaluated. A critical moment here. I think Coach Jenkins has to feel pretty good about what his team's done coming into here, playing his first opportunity against an FBS team. But let's go finish this thing. The 14 points for Bethune today is a low mark under Brian Jenkins. Had 14 points last season against South Carolina State in a victory. Brian Jenkins takes time out with 313 remaining. We we're talking about our Goodyear Blimp taking it down to FIU. Let's take a look at how those boys get down there. Uh, we'll be going over to uh, North Perry Airport, which is just next to the uh, uh, Sun Life Stadium, and we'll be swapping uh, cameraman and pilot as well, and then we'll uh, continue down to FIU for the, uh, for the uh, evening game. We usually generally fly anywhere from 1,000 to 1,500 feet uh, above the stadium. Generally about 1,500. Uh, gives us a good signal from the ground, uh, no matter where our uh, receive site on the ground is set up. Um, and it keeps us out of kind of the thermal conditions as well. So We usually have to be overhead about an hour beforehand just to make sure all of our camper equipment checks out. Duke, Florida International, next on ESPNU. Thanks a lot, Corky. Appreciate it. It's cool stuff right there. David Blackwell takes off for another first down run. Blackwell finally pushed out of bounds. I'm talking about Duke and FIU coming up at the top of the hour. College football primetime presented by Five Hour Energy as part of Tailgate Week, fired up by Kingsford Charcoal. Duke and Sean Renfrey taking on T.Y. Hilton. One of the most electrifying players in the country that you may never have heard of, but you're going to know about him tonight. Blue Devils and Panthers at the top of the hour. Jonathan Moment, the carry, across midfield. Denzel Perriman, the stop. This is T.Y. Hilton. 
And that's when people started to take notice of T.Y. Hilton. And Rob Stone and Danny Cannell at the top of the hour. We'll have Duke and FIU for you. Blackwell on the low snap. Takes a shot, and it's incomplete. McLeod was the intended target. And this is what T.Y. Hilton has done already this season. Stay tuned. we got a really good one coming up for you. He's exciting. He's another one of those guys where you hand it to him, screen it to him, throw it deep to him, reverse it to him, put him in wildcat, just get him the ball. Do you have a guy like that at all you, that you could just put in any situation and he would get yardage for you no matter what? We've had a few, sure. You never have enough, though. <laughs> Bobbled and intercepted. Kelvin Kane rumbling his way into the end zone for a Miami touchdown. A moment of glory for Kelvin Kane as he takes it back 59 yards. Making the most of your opportunities there. You get a chance to play, go show up on film. With the subs in there for Miami. Kelvin Kane is going to tell his kids about that the rest of his life. Two minutes left in a 31 point game. Let's kick it to Dari Noka in the studio. All right, guys, we are just about 11 and a half minutes away from Duke and FIU down there in Miami. Sean Renfrey, 646 passing yards in his last two games, both Blue Devil wins. Looking forward to it, Dari. Thanks. Kelvin Kane, 6'3", 230-pound sophomore from Clovis, California. Just took it back nearly 60 yards. I think he may be a little bit out of breath at this particular moment. <laughs> he doesn't get to run like that on scout team. <laughs> on scout team, you don't run that far, so. Super opportunity for him. He's a long ways away from home. Ball is batted right here, showing good hands. And a little speed. And not the most impressive ever from Joe McGordon trying to bring him down. It's going to be tough to bring down Kane. Pass was bobbled by Tyree Green, and Kane takes it the other way. Turnover margin was a big factor for Miami. You said it earlier, coaches focus on turnover margin so much because it really gives you a good snapshot of what your team is doing, taking care of the football. Yeah, Miami think, had struggled early this season. They've been pretty good today. I think sometimes it's just a result. It, again, I know I keep going back to this. Just your confidence, your assertiveness of, of stepping up and making throws or being able to break on balls and getting guys to the football so that the second guy there can strip the ball out. We saw that early in the first half on the goal line. Um, certainly something everybody wants and you teach against it and for it. But the reality is, is it really shows up in your, your just your assertiveness level. Two turnovers today for Bethune Cookman. Miami has turned the ball over once as well, but that was a big issue for them. Miami, seven turnovers in the first three games, just one today. They've taken care of the football and they're about to take care of the Wildcats. Angelo Cabrera, a little stutter step and a little bit of room. Good return from Cabrera down the sideline. Finally stacked up though. Flag is thrown at the end of the play after a 41 yard return. Kendall Tompkins wrapped him up. Miami has been pretty stellar on kickoff team today. A lot of speed, and your, your kicker gets that ball up in the air. A lot of hang time gives you guys a chance to get down there, but effective there, unfortunately, a penalty. Holding number 19 of the return team during the return. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Threw another flag out yep, there. I think the it might have been somebody mouthing off. Came after the play, so this could end up being a 30-yard penalty. Tavares Dantzler was called for the holding on the return team for Bethune Cookman. This is the thing that Brian Jenkins wants to clean up. 
In his second year as the head coach of the Thune Cookman, penalties have been an issue. Four straight games of double digit penalties. So after a great return from Cabrera, Bethune Cookman will only start this ball at its own 20 yard line. Good to have intensity. Also good to have a little poise. Balance that out right here. Remember at one point it was a Bethune Cookman 7 0 lead. That was after the first quarter. Miami has scored 45 of the last 52 points in this game. Andronicus love it across the 25 yard line. Pick up of six. And Bethune Cookman trying to compete for a MEAC title. They went seven and one in Brian Jenkins' first year in the MEAC last year. They were picked eighth out of nine teams in the MEAC last year. And Brian Jenkins did some really great things, coach of the year in that conference. They will compete this season. They're one and one so far in the MEAC. Andronicus love it. A little bit of daylight for Andronicus love it into the open field. Finally, A.J. Highsmith knocks him out. Good run from Andronicus Lovett, 38 yards. Coach Jenkins from a great coaching pedigree, as we mentioned. They've been running this zone play with pretty good success. Missed tackle right there at the point of attack. And then also a great recruiting base here in Florida, so that bodes well for the Wildcats. 23 of Bethune-Cookman's players on the roster are from South Florida. And again, we mentioned the 13 FBS transfers as well. And Brian Jenkins has done a good job. The Bethune offense, nearly 400 total yards. They've outgained Miami today. But Miami has dominated on the scoreboard. Seven-yard pickup. And down to our final 40 ticks. Bethune Cookman, you know, they had the fumble early in the game on the goal line, cost them some points. A missed field goal cost them some points and a little bit of momentum. You need to be able to take advantage of that when you're in this type of stadium. Third down coming up for Bethune Cookman. Thune Cookman and Miami, led by Al Golden, both these teams will move to two and two on the season. Miami, after falling to Maryland in week number one in ACC play, will get back at it. Ja'Cory Harris, who missed that game against Maryland, will play his first conference game next week, and he'll have to do it in a very tough environment. Blacksburg, Virginia. Blackwell guns it. And a complete pass for Bethune Cookman. Courtney Keith making the grab. Adam, I like what Al Golden's doing here. I know it doesn't come as fast as everybody wants to, and he had a bunch of curveballs thrown at him. Right. Very difficult. Uh, but I think this guy knows what Miami football is about, and I think he has a clear vision about where he wants to go with it. Again, another guy extremely knowledgeable, great pedigree. And I think Hurricane football is going to be fine. 45-14 Miami, final eight seconds of this game. Let's send it to the studios. Dari no Kane studio. Uh, so the blimp was just at the University of Miami game, went and rested for a moment, and now there he is at FIU's stadium. Golden Panthers getting set to take on Duke in a matter of minutes, guys. Thanks a lot, Dari. Glad to have Dari back in the studio as well. Second week back, right where you belong, buddy. Duke and FIU coming up at the top of the hour. Eight seconds left. Ja'Cory Harris, big test coming up next week. And Miami has had to deal with these type of tests all season long. The adversity that you were just talking about, Coach. The scandal. The injuries that this team has dealt with. Finally starting to get healthy. They'll have two of their top players back next week. Ray Ray Armstrong, their fine safety, will be back next week. Olivier Vernon is still out, though. He's going to miss the next couple of games still, but Armstrong and Dyer both back next week. 
couple of big additions on the defensive side of the football for Miami. Got to feel good about what Ja'Cory Harris did today. Great day for him. Blackwell trying to finish off the day on a positive note. He gets wrapped up and brought down. Randy James tackled by A.J. Highsmith, and Miami bounces back with a dominant win. And Al Golden's team is back to 500. Slow start, but got going. I think defensively they have to do some work against the rush, but the big plays helped, and the lack of interceptions by Ja'Cory Harris, huge. First time that Ja'Cory Harris has a zero interception game since last October. Fine performance today by Miami. Ja'Cory Harris, 12 of 17, couple of touchdowns, 175 yards. Lamar Miller, despite the shoulder injury, added a couple of TDs as well. Tommy Streeter had two touchdown receptions. And Al Golden trying to bring his team back. After all the adversity, they're back to 2-2, two and, two and they'll get back to ACC play next week. Once again, our final score today, Miami 14, Bethune-Cookman, or Miami 45, Bethune-Cookman 14. Coming up next, Duke and FIU. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Dan Hawkins and our entire production crew, I'm Adam Amin. Let's send you to University Park. Rob Stone, Danny Cannell, FIU, and Duke. Guys, take it away.